the melting of the polar ice and increase in the temperature of the seven seas. All the best brains who got together in Kyoto and then in Paris declared coal and the resultant CO2 as the biggest culprit for the global warming. Now they would be busy showing pictures of gossiping seals and white polar bears who would question the loss of the Arctic ice through supposedly CO2 induced heating resulting in the melting of ice all around. These innocent pictures would show alongside factories mainly power plants belching out smoke and letting out copious quantities of CO2 in the atmosphere. Now left to them they would like to shut down all the power plants based on hydrocarbons particularly based on coal so that the humans and animals could be saved. Now these conferences were held in large air-conditioned auditoriums and the <coughs> protests were mainly in areas which were very cold climates. These reactions would probably have been different had you denied them the cooling if they were in the hot climate in declaring coal as the villain. President Obama declared a war on coal. U.S. coal production fell down, fell down to 800 million 800 um, million metric tons. That was a 25% drop since 2008. Cheaper alternatives like uh, shale gas, natural gas took over the center stage. Coal mines in USA started shutting down. Now in sympathy with what the US or the China did, that is cut down on the coal production other countries also followed suit. Investment in wind and solar became the flavor of the season. In our country, Prime Minister Modi set up a very ambitious target for the renewables, 100,000 megawatt of solar and 60,000 megawatt of wind by 2020. Prices started coming down drastically and it was expected someday renewable, renewables would be cheaper than coal. And after all this drama which was taking place in all these years, there comes Pres President Donald Trump who is probably trying to undo all the supposedly good work done by the predecessors he is questioning every hypothesis and every accepted belief. That is what we heard during the time when he was campaigning to be the president. Now he did not explicitly address the scientific legitimacy of human caused climate change, but he said, we are going to deal with real environment on the play of the market forces. Whatever is cheaper, whether it's coal, oil, shale gas, natural gas, renewables or atomic, that is the commodity which is going to be used. Emphasis on clean coal technology will definitely increase. This will increase the cost of coal based power, but if the increase is marginal, that cost will be absorbed. Next is greater use of coal will depend more on the price of the natural gas, the, the earliest, the nearest competitor. If the price of the natural gas goes up, this will lead to higher use of coal. The next is wind and solar will continue to attract investments. Costs of both will come down as larger volumes are attracted, but the role both these, wind and solar, will be supplemental and not primary. We have to appreciate that power as of now cannot be stored economically and it has to be used as and when it is produced. So while coal, shale, gas, oil will remain the primary source, wind and solar will only supplement when conditions are ideal for generation. In other words, 
wind and solar shall play its part only when it the time is conducive for their generation the next point is the storage of electricity will attract huge research to develop a technology for economic storage of power work done by companies like tesla and other companies are showing signs of an early breakthrough now the future of coal is significantly dependent on how china will see it china is already paying a very heavy price due to the emergence of smog every winter in cities like beijing and shanghai affecting health and welfare of its citizens china will continue to expand its renewable portfolio to to reduce its dependence on coal what about india india will have to use coal as a primary source to the extent of 60% renewables are expected to go up to 30% coal will continue to remain the king for the next few years now what is the effect of trump effect on developing economies like india president trump had said that he would cancel the paris climate agreement which was ratified in november 2016 and it requires a 3 year period to quit he had also said he would cut all the money spent on climate change aid to developing nations and slash clean energy funding the new president now says that he has an open mind on paris accord to combat climate change now if he decides to withdraw developing countries like india would be left in the lurch as they were expected to receive a compensation from developed countries to cut down on carbon usage and encourage their use of renewables now that's a very serious question mark which will be raised in case he decides to walk out now let's hope good sense will prevail and the new born political leaders they will learn their lessons not the hard way causing serious damage to the economy of developing countries going against the accepted scientific hypothesis is not always the best way to start your innings with these words thank you very much